Hi, friends out there in Facebook world. How you doing? I'm Pastor Terry here, Okotoks Alliance Church, and uh, the, these are uh, Thursday Thoughts with Terry. Uh, we're starting to get packed up. Maybe this looks like your home. Uh, Christmas decorations going away. Epiphany was yesterday. Um, that's the close. So the day before Epiphany, um, January 5, is the... Uh, hey, Eddie. Uh, January 5 is the... Um, uh, the twelfth day of Christmas, uh, so the end of the Christmas season, and then Epiphany in the sort of traditional church calendar um, is January sixth, which is uh, it's often marked the celebration or the acknowledgement of the wise men having come uh, to uh, the Christ Child and that kind of thing. Um, the Eastern Church uh, celebrated their Christmas yesterday, so that's kind of fascinating too. Uh, Eastern Church, Western Church. Uh, don't always have the same, well, well they don't have the same calendar. Uh, Gay, uh, nice to have you join me. Thanks so much. Um, th these are Thursday Thoughts with Terry, and I typically use this uh, kind of time slot to, um, to just give a little heads up into where we're going this coming Sunday and invite you to maybe read the passage of Scripture that we're going to be opening together. Um, think about some of the things that we're doing. We're in a series uh, in uh, the, the, the book of Philippians. Uh, it, that's Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. Um, uh, we started this series two Sundays ago uh, at the end of, this, of 2020, and uh, Pastor Craig pointed out the fact that um, the Philippian church was the first church in Europe, and it became kind of an outpost for uh, the, the church growing beyond just the Mediterranean, beyond just um, uh, Turkey, Asia Minor, that kind of thing. Um, so it's a significant church in that. Uh, it's also a significant church in that um, as you read through the letter, you realize this is a church that Paul loves, and it's a church that loves Paul. Like there is a beautiful uh, respect for one another, a love for one another that is going to become a significant part of the theme of, uh, of the letter as we go through it. And then the other thing that I think is uh, particularly worth noting is that the, the book of Philippians is... Um, some people have called it uh, the letter of joy uh, or the book of joy. Um, it is, uh, it is this, this constant sort of exhortation to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say, again, I say it, rejoice. I never get tired of telling you to rejoice. Um, and and the, I think the point of inquiry for us, and it's going to be a big part of the theme of this, of this series, is, well, well, why? And how? Because then you realize, and, and um, uh, Kevin McCubbin last week made, made a point of this, um, you realize that this is a letter that Paul is writing from jail. Um, it's probably jail in Rome. Uh, it's probably his first incarceration, not his second. His second led to his death, his first incarceration in Rome. Um, ultimately, he was released. Um, his church history tells us he went into Spain, uh, built some more churches uh, before he was arrested again and, and then was executed. Um, it's also possible that he's writing from jail in Ephesus. Um, uh, uh, he makes reference in 2 Corinthians to despairing for life itself uh, during his incarceration in Ephesus when he was in jail there. And um, I'm not sure that it really matters. I, I think the best uh, is to see him as in jail in Rome. But we just want to be guarded not to draw too significant conclusions based on where was this letter written from. The fact is, he was in jail. Um, how does someone live with joy, exhort others to joy when everything seems to be going sideways, when it's not sort of upwards and to the right the way we would typically anticipate it. And, and it's one of the reasons why I've been really excited that we're doing this series now, because surely here we are, um, what, 10, 11 months now uh, into COVID um, with, frankly, some pretty sobering uh, projections ahead. Uh, this thing isn't going to be done in the next month or two. And, um, and so how do we be the church in circumstances that are just not what we would have ordered? Um, and, and one of the answers, and we're going to start to dig into this uh, this coming Sunday. I just got to go over here where I can set something down. Uh, one of the answers is, is going to be uh, this uh, exhortation that we're going to look at this Sunday. And, and Paul says this. He says, whatever happens... Conduct, this is Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. I'm trying to get my Bible and my paper in my hand here so that I can actually see them both. I'm sorry. I'm not doing a very good job of that. Um, let's see what we can do without dropping something. Philippians 1, 27. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. What's that, right? Like... Um, 
in the midst of his incarceration, uh, Paul's in jail. Uh, he is writing to the Philippian church to say, look, whatever happens, remember you are representing Jesus. Uh, that was the NIV that I read. The New Living Translation translates it this way. Above all, you must live as citizens of heaven, conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. Well, these are, uh, hey Brenda, happy new year to you as well. Um, uh, these are uh, the words, and, and we're going to dig into this because Paul has some really practical counsel for us. And my hope is, my prayer, you can join me in praying this way, uh, that this is just going to be a, a, a series that's going to bring great encouragement to us. Um, that indeed the epistle of joy, the letter of joy that Paul writes is going to become something that, that stirs joy in us. Not a fabricated joy, uh, not joy that is temporarily located, like in the circumstances that we find ourselves, but the joy which is, that comes from being found in Christ, from fixing our eyes on Jesus and, and living um, uh, in light of that. Uh, he says in the beginning of cha Philippians chapter 2, he says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort, comfort from his love, if any co common, common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete. Uh, th this is going to be about joy, and, and he's going to give us some coaching on, on how to do this together um, this is really significant stuff. I have been, I have been looking forward to years to the opportunity to be able to preach uh, the book of Philippians. Um, this, this, maybe kind of a couple of closing thoughts. Um, if you have been a follower of Jesus for very many years, it is very likely that some of your favorite passages of Scripture are found in Philippians. There are so many quotable quotes, um, and I won't try to quote them here now myself. I'll do it on Sunday. Uh, I bet your favorite passages are here. Well, how do they thread together? How do they tie together? What is the context of this letter? And, and then I, I, my, my, you're going to find that those words of encouragement, sentences of encouragement that you find, those passages of encouragement are connected into one another in a way that's going to make them even that much more so, even more encouraging. Here's the last thought. Uh, this is an eight-week series. We've done two. We've got six more to go. Um, we're then going to move into, and it's going to be about us so, so I've called it Joy Unlocked, um, and, and, and so that's what this is going to be about. But then we're going to step into a series at the beginning of Lent um, that is looking at the end times, calling it the end of the world as we know it. Looking at Matthew 24, 25, uh, Jesus says some things about um, uh, what we can be expecting. Uh, I'm thinking this is timely. And then Easter Sunday, we're going to step into a series that's going to talk about um, our, our hope of resurrection. We're going to firstly look at Jesus and his resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15, and, and then our hope of resurrection. But then we're going to talk about the, well, what is this future that we're called to? We have a tendency to, to be all about the here and now and to forget about the fact that we actually are representing Jesus in the here and now as a, uh, as a, um, a as citizens of heaven. Uh, another translation of that calls it uh, a colony uh, of the redeemed. A colony of the redeemed. Here in a place uh, that, that sometimes is hostile to the gospel, was certainly hostile to Jesus, was certainly hostile to the early church. And yet, uh, and yet the early church would say, and we can be joyful because God is doing something extraordinary in you, through you, because of you, in our world. God is not uh, limited by these circumstances. So I hope you can be with us this coming Sunday and through the Sundays that are coming, uh, through the season that's coming. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very excited to be teaching uh, together with Pastor Craig and, and others that I make to invite to come in and bring a word because uh, God's not done with us here. He is doing an extraordinary thing in our world, and, and we need to keep looking to him in anticipation of what that, what that thing is. So bless you. Thank you for being with me here, and uh, feel free to throw comments into the comment. Uh, uh, welcome Facebook uh, friends, and uh, bye for now.